Hello and welcome to this special edition of the Hub on CGTN. I'm Wang Guan in Beijing. Today it is my distinct honor to be invited to the residency of His Excellency Mr. Fernando Lugris, the Ambassador of Uruguay to China. Ambassador Lugris, thank you so much for this opportunity. Welcome. I'm very happy to have you here. How are you? How's, how's your life um, as the ambassador of the most sought after, the most popular soccer nation in the world these days during the time of the World Cup? Well, we're quite busy uh, getting ready for the matches and celebrating this uh, amazing show that the World Cup is. I think it's a call to all human beings to remember that we are part of the same family, that we have to stand all together, that we need to really make a, a clear statement that the World Cup is a moment of peace and celebration of sport and unity and friendship. So we are trying to do the same here in Beijing, uh, collaborating with other embassies, especially with the embassy of Qatar, and supporting them because this is a celebration for us all. And I think a Chinese uh, audience is really going to follow all the matches and we're very delighted to be here during another World Cup by the message of peace and amity of the world, uh, one scene from the opening ceremony was really striking, whereby Morgan Freeman, right, an African-American actor, was uh, talking to a physically challenged person from Qatar. And that was a really um, you know, heart-touching moment. It's very important because uh, soccer plays a very important role in, in our societies worldwide. And this uh, uh, World Cup has been followed by millions and millions of people. So it's a good moment to convey positive messages of inclusion, diversity, and the importance of sports in our lives. So we are happy. We are a nation that celebrated, the, you know, we organized the first World Cup in history. And so you won it. And we won it, but especially we, we organized it. So we feel that this is a little bit of our baby and it has grown in an amazing uh, manner. In, in almost a century and we, we are proud to see that the, the World Cup is also moving around regions and it's important that we pay attention to, to diversity and that uh, the sport unite us and during the month in a, in a fantastic manner. You know, the English love to say that uh, it's coming home, but it's actually Uruguay who staged the first World Cup and won it. And for very good historical reasons because actually uh, if you look at the t-shirt of Uruguay, you're going to find four stars. And those four stars represent what FIFA has confirmed as the four World Cups of Uruguay. Two prehistorical ones. In 1924, Uruguay was the world champion in Paris Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. But that was the first formal world championship of the modern era. And uh, actually, there was a very important Chinese uh, person in the audience, and that was Deng Xiaoping, who was a student in Paris, right, right, right. and apparently he had to sell his coat in order to get money to pay the oh. entrance to see this final. And he was absolutely shocked to see a young nation that was only 100 years old, uh, coming from South America, with some the very first African players playing world championship in the world, and especially in Europe. And that was Uruguay. So when Uruguay won that uh, Olympic uh, Cup, uh, he was really, really touched. Of course, um, I'm itching to go. Talking about Uruguay, I really wanted to ask you, Ambassador Lugris. Uruguay is a country with the relatively small population, 3.5 million. That is 1 60th of that of Brazil and 1 400th of that of China. Mm -hmm. And yet you have four World Cup titles, um, two Olympics and then 15 Copa America titles, tying Argentina for the most Copa titles won. How did you guys do it? Well, I think we have developed an incredibly efficient system of training our kids. And our kids are exactly the same as any other kids in the world. But the way that they are being trained in an extremely professional environment and with a very professional uh, methodology, I think really generate something different and we are generating superstars constantly and if you ask me but what is the secret of this yeah. training is it is extremely professional our little kids they are three they're five they're seven and they are competing competing they have real competitions and they have the pressure of their parents and their neighborhoods and their schools but the competitions are real so when they grow up and they are 15, 16, and sometimes they have to leave Uruguay and go to Europe because mm -hmm. they pay them more, 
uh, they are not afraid of any stadium. They are not afraid of the press. They are not af afraid of the anything because they have been under a super pressure of being superstars since very early stage. So this is something that we are absolutely open to, to share it with uh, our friends here in China. And that's why we have one of the pillars of our strategic partnership is uh, cooperation in sports. And believe me, we have to learn a lot from China in many, many, many well, sports. Humble, but in, in football, I think in we football? have we have some ideas that we can share with uh, with our Chinese friends, and especially there are so many kids that they love soccer. If you think about it, um, in China, it was proposed as an either-or proposition. You know, China had this Soviet-style nationalized sporting system back in the 90s and 80s when I grew up. It's either you go to academic school for real, study, go to university, or you play football for the rest of your life. It's an either-or um, option for them. But in Uruguay, I suppose that um, academic studies do not necessarily exclude uh, a soccer career. It's, it's not one thing or the other. Uh, and especially, you know, if we are talking about uh, uh, human health and, you know, living in a, in a healthy environment, it is very important to play sports and also to have a lot of uh, people who, who play group sports that, are the, that on, not only develop your body, but also the way that you play with others and, and it generates uh, leadership and, and, you know, it, it's, it is very important. Discipline. And a lot of discipline and, and you know how to behave in a in a complex little society of, of 11. So yes, this is one of the areas that I think we have been more successful in our history and that we are absolutely open to share with our Chinese friends. And, and our interest is not the super leagues of China or sending the superstars here. We think that uh, the part that we can contribute the most is our genuine uh, knowledge uh, on how to train mm -hmm. little ones. And we really hope that we can receive more kids in Uruguay, kids from China, that we can send more trainers and, and that exchanges and people-to-people -people exchanges in the field of soccer could play a, a more important role. Uh, because I think there's a, there's a huge space for collaboration in this area. Talking about Uruguay, how far do you think it can go this time in Qatar? Well, we have very high <laughs> expectations. You know, in South Africa, we reached number four. In Russia, number five. Uh, so we are preceded with very good performing in, in the previous it's World Cups. Group this time. But the, the group is very, very tough. We really respect uh, the, 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 the group that we are. Many people say, well, but you know, Suarez, Cavani, they were superstars, but now it's a little bit of the end of their career. Yeah, but there's some new coming. Nunez, uh, Valverde, Nunez, Pelistri. I mean, so yes. many young ones that could be the stars of this World Cup. And even we can see, you know, some final superstar uh, performance from, from Cavani and Suarez that I think all of them, they're going to try to do the best uh, possible. Good luck to you uh, when you play against uh, South Korea uh, in the first match. Uh, we have Sonny recovering, you know, uh, it's going to be a tough match, but uh, fingers crossed. Uh, one last question on soccer. Uh, I mean, what do you think went wrong with Chinese men's soccer team? That is the most asked question, not just by some uh, global observers, but by Chinese ourselves. Well, I, I don't have the answer to, to no, that question. But what would be question. your advice? Well, my advice is to, to really work not on the super mega show and the super leagues and spending so much money on bringing superstars. That contributes to the, to the show, which is an important part of, 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 of football. But the reality of football takes place in neighborhoods, in poor neighborhoods most of the time. Nothing related to money, nothing related to mega infrastructures, a lot related to love, passion, training, professional uh, things. So my advice would be, it's not about zeros and, and, and large uh, amounts of money. It's about the right um, time that those kids need in order to enjoy uh, the game and the, the right training to make them feel that they can really do a career and advance. Talking about the love for it, um, you know, there's a very interesting South American term that's, um, that goes like, Juga bonito. Juega bonito. Juega bonito. Yeah. Play for the love of it. I think this is what's lacking for Chinese football, you know, being a former uh, youth player myself. Um, we're being too obsessed with, you know, utilities, the materialism side of football, instead of doing it for the love of it. It has to come with, uh, with love, like any other action, human action. And uh, I think uh, there is something that, it, that we need to explore how to, to make those kids understand that this is, this is a passion. 
And, and of course, parents have to be on the side of the kid and they have to be on the side of the passion because if, if your parents want you to be studying nonstop for 24 hours per day, then it's not such a passion and, and you're not so proud to be a, a good a football player. So I think there are many things that we can reflect uh, together and, and, and we are absolutely open to, to contribute to the reflection. And of course, we are different societies with different uh, histories and, and, and backgrounds, but I think we need elements from the other. Some of our top sport men and women have been trained here in China and they have achieved major achievements in their own careers coming here and meeting gold medals that we that we simply cannot get because well, we have a tiny population with very limited uh, infrastructures most of the time and and when our sport men and women come here and they train on sports that China is super super top level it's amazing so this kind of corporations, people-to-people -people corporations, should continue. And I, I really strongly advise to have more mm -hmm. uh, cooperation with South America in general, with Uruguay in particular. And as I said, it's not about big amounts of money. It's about passion, love, training, and really working on the kids. Yeah, one last question about football. I, I knew I said it was going to be the last question, but this is... But you're a, football, <laughs> you're a football player yourself, so... Um, Explain to the Chinese viewers, wouldn't you, about the concept of Huga Bonito. What is it really? Well, I think that the expression came from, from Brazil that, that has always shown us uh, how to play in a, in, a, in a fantastic manner. But I think it's something that all South America and, and Latin America in general has, uh, has produced and, and that we have a, a cult. And this is uh, how to really play in a, in, a, in a beautiful manner and enjoy this game as, as an art. Because there's a lot of dance in, 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 in soccer. I mean, this is not a mechanical thing that you have to be strong and, and kill the other one and resist and time. No, I mean, what we try to find in our poor neighborhoods is people who are super creative, who knows tricks and can do things that are more related sometimes to dance than to a, a mechanical engineering uh, process of uh, trying to make a goal. So uh, I, I personally think that there's a lot of art and, and that, that's why it's so Latin America in a way, because we are a very artistic and free society that loves to uh, generate beautiful things and, and have a lot of fun. And again, another important concept is this is fun. It's not an industry, it's, it's not an obsession. How do you say that in Spanish? It's very divertido. It has to be a lot of fun because it's a sport and, and, and one has to celebrate it as a as a, as a fun celebration for the society. And believe me, what is going on in Uruguay now is that classes are suspended during <laughs> the matches. Everybody is having a lot of fun. We win, we lose, but we're going to have a lot of yeah. fun. Yeah, you live football. Uh, let's talk about China-Uruguay relations. There's so many aspects of it. Um, China is a very important trading partner, but I know that you've been uh, visiting uh, many Chinese provinces and municipalities and wanted to bring this trading relationship to the next level. Um, where is it right now and how do you hope it to achieve the next level? For the last 10 years, China has been our number one trading partner uh, by far. And when I say by far is that we export five times more to China than to the United States. And we have friendly relations with the US and we are an American nation. Uh, but this is a, 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 a simple number for you to understand how important uh, China is as a, as a destiny of our, of our exports. And we are working very hard in order to diversify our exports to this market. We want more uh, woods from Uruguay coming to, to China, but we also want to begin to insist on the importance of the trading services. Because Uruguay looks very agriculture if you look at it from China. But actually, when you ask me about the trade with the U.S., well, 75% of our software goes to the U.S. and almost none to China. So we have an, an extreme concentration on trading goods and agricultural products that are fantastic because uh, this is a, a it, it is like this because we are very complementary. But I think we haven't explored yet all the incredible possibilities that we can have in the field of services. So we need more interaction between our companies, we need more joint ventures, we need more IT in our basket of uh, trade and relations and investments, we need more tourism, we need more logistics, we need to think together and plan uh, new things. 
Of course, we are a country that celebrates free trade. Yeah. Because if you ask me two very important victories of Uruguayan history, I would say <laughs> soccer, of course, the, all the World Cups and American Cups. And the other very important victory of Uruguay is that we hosted a very important conference at the beginning of the 80s, and we invited China to be an observer at that moment. And that conference uh, launched the Uruguay round of negotiations, mm -hmm. trade negotiations, in order to develop a new body that is called the World Trade Organization. And this organization was born in order to have more free trade. And we are believers that we have to have a lot of fun with soccer, but we also need to push on multilateral action in order to have more free trade. And that's why we are working in with a, a lot of conviction uh, as a Mercosur country, as a country that belongs to a very important free trade agreement in our region, to be the first one that uh, has already developed a feasibility study jointly with the MOFCOM of China, mm -hmm. and that has identified that it would be very beneficial for the Uruguay and China to advance in the negotiation of a free trade agreement. So next level, more services, mm. more goods, more diversity in our trade, and hopefully a free trade agreement that can really help us to elevate the integration of our economies to a new level. Mm -hmm. You talk about uh, uh, the products of um, you know, Uruguay, made in Uruguay, and there's a very interesting description, characterization that is uh, natural Uruguay, right? Mm. It's translated in English. Uh, can you elaborate that to the Chinese viewers? What is that? Well, let me put it this way. Uruguay looks small in a huge continent like South America, but we are uh, a very generous land. Uh, I mean, we have a lot of land, especially for the, this three and a half million yeah. people. So we have a lot of beautiful land that is almost all extremely perfect for agriculture. And, and we have a lot of fresh water. We have a fantastic mm -hmm. environment to produce very healthy products. And being such a strong agricultural nation, we have put all our research and technology and investigation in uh, generating uh, the best possible races of cows, the best possible methodologies in tracing. You put chips in a cow since they were babies, yep. and then until they've been served on dinner tables. And that is original. I mean, I was just told by your staff. I mean, I found that amazing. You can trace and you can know that you're having a fantastic steak in, in Shanghai and, and, and you can get all the information of this animal since it was born and you can realize that it has absolutely no hormones, absolutely no antibiotics, everything has been forbidden by law for 50 years, but then you get all the other information and we have carbon neutral uh, meat that we are exporting to the most uh, important markets in the world. So you're having not only a steak that is very tasty, very natural, and very nice, but you're also contributing to the environment. Some people say, oh, well, but those are, you know, agricultural products. There's not a lot of technology involved. They say, oh, oh, there's a lot of technology. There's a lot of investigation. There's a lot of effort uh, in, in producing very healthy products. And then our dairy products are very important. We rank number three, exporting uh, our powdered milk to the dairy companies here in China. But this is the beginning of the story. I think we, we have a, a huge uh, area to, to grow up in this market, to, to make people understand that if you drink milk that comes from a very healthy cow, from a super healthy environment with all the traceability, grass-fed, living in open air, with zero contamination in the air. I mean, that makes a huge difference for your baby. So we are trying to promote more of our agricultural products, but we are also trying to expand our basket of, uh, of products so more Chinese people can discover more uh, things from, from Uruguay. And this is quite amazing, and we are taking opportunity of CIIE and other events to show our olive oils, our wines, our Super premium, not industrial. We are not going to be in every supermarket in China, no way. We don't have the quantities, but we want to reach those who are looking for something organic, something very natural, something exclusive, coming from the other side of the planet, literally. And, uh, and we have uh, a nice offer of all that. Ambassador, I know that you have visited virtually every province, mm -hmm. municipality, region of China. Any aspect of the Chinese culture or society that has made a lasting impression on you? The diversity, the immense diversity. And what I'm saying is that when you live here, when you travel, 
the more you travel, the more surprises you, you have and the more beautiful things you, you discover. So I, 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 I love being here and I think the most remarkable thing is to, to realize how complex the Chinese civilization is and how harmonic also is the life in China. Um, because you have a, a mosaic of, uh, of people and cultures and, and languages, let's put it this way, that, are, that is quite uh, amazing, but it's also an, an example of integration by its own. So I love to travel to the West, I love to be in Tibet, I love yeah. Yunnan province, and, mm -hmm. and because when you are in those places and when you see your minorities, uh, you discover this incredible uh, diversity of, of, of your country, and I think you have to be very proud of it and you need to open the doors for more tourists to, to come back to, to <laughs> hopefully China. Hopefully it will happen soon. Hopefully, so hopefully because there are so many friends who are really, really wishing to, to be back and to, you know, to try all this incredible Chinese food that, you know, Chinese food, we, there's so much food, I mean, Sichuan food, Yunnan food, I mean, you name it. And, and, and people are really missing the traveling to China and we are missing them here and of course we're missing a lot our Chinese friends coming to Uruguay. I saw you love arts, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. You're an art person, uh, to say the obvious. Well, I think I come from an art country. I mean, in Uruguay, of course, the soccer players get more attention than yeah. the artists. But I have to say, if you ask me which are the people that you would put them in, in equal level to the sportmen uh, and the soccer players, I would say our artists. I mean, Uruguay has generated an incredible amount of super um, high-level artists in, in the country and we are very proud of our singers, of our painters, our sculptors. So we also would like to invite uh, uh, Chinese people to come and discover art and that's why we are organizing uh, exhibitions in as many provinces as we can in order to bring our colors and our diversity so Chinese people can also discover this side of Uruguay that it's fascinating and it's, uh, it's very Latin American. And I saw one art piece over there uh, with a Chinese character saying benevolence. Is that so? Why do you keep it there? Oh, I think it's, it's very, very nice. It was a present from a very important Argentinian artist who was a, a very dear friend of mine. And uh, of course, he gave it to me, I think, a decade before I knew I was going to come to China. And it has always been in my home. So I think it's, it's, it's beautiful that I that I have it and I think it has marked that in a way uh, the painting was going to come to China uh, or come back to China. <laughs> you know, we're living, like it or not, in a divided world uh, marked by geopolitics and conflicts and even hot wars. Um, Chinese President Xi Jinping has been um, advocating for building a, a community of a shared future in G20 at APAC. How do you look at China's role in world affairs today and especially going forward? Well, we think China plays a, a fundamental role in this international scenario as a P5 of the Security Council, as the second largest economy or first economy coming very soon, depending on the way you read it. Uh, the responsibility of China is, is very big, and especially because you concentrate a, such an important amount of, of human population. So we, we know that China plays a very important role, and we welcome when China um, offers initiatives, ideas, when it's proactive in reaching out others. We welcome the recent conversation between the President of China and the President of the United States. I think this is what we need. We need more dialogue. We need more multilateral negotiations. We can get very tough, but only at the UN level. At the UN level, it's fine to be a tough negotiator, but this is the, the limit that we have to put to ourselves. We have to defend national positions, regional positions, but within the premises of the UN. We don't need to get into other uh, spheres like conflict because this is really the past. And, and you know, Latin America and the Caribbean is the most peaceful region in the planet and we are the most diverse region in the planet. We are a continent uh, with four population uh, pillars with the natives who are totally related to Asia because they came from Asia, so the DNA is from here. We have uh, 20 millions of Arabs living in, in Latin America for centuries. And this is more Arabs than the Arabs in the US, in the EU, and in Southeast Asia together. So we are the real melting pot. And we are the most incredible example of peace and stability. 
And you can blame us that we have problems in this, problems in there, yes. But there are no conflicts between our states and there's peace. And there has been peace for many, many years. So we are a nice example that, yes, it is possible. And China is a, a fundamental actor in order to keep the peace and stability in this planet. And I think it's a fundamental actor to maintain those nice houses that we have <laughs> developed together, WTO, the UN system, and especially in the environmental field. And I, I really welcome all the efforts that China is doing internally in order to really have a progressive agenda in environmental protection, in combating climate change. And it's so important to see the leadership of China in those areas internationally. Harmony and melting pot in Latin America only except in football. We're the rivalry between Pele and Maradona, or Uruguay and Argentina, but uh, but we, we have we'll a, see. we are we'll see we are rivals when we compete <laughs> between ourselves. But believe me, when we are at the World Cup uh, and we see another Latin American country uh, competing, we always love to see our brothers and sisters. So we're happy to see the first match uh, was uh, very good for for Ecuador, and, and and we hope that all Latin American countries can perform a, an excellent World Cup. Um, our best luck, Ambassador Lugris. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That will do it for this edition of The Hub on CGTN. I'm Meng Guan in Beijing. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll see you again soon. And our news coverage continues on CGTN.